This video shows how I bend the tubing for the spare tire carriers on Chevy Express and GMC Savannah vans. The location of the rear door hinges on our vans makes it difficult for people to fabricate their own spare tire carrier. These custom bent tubes solves that problem while allowing the doors to maintain their full range of motion. I do sell the custom bent tubes, but this video was intended to help others who wish to bend their own. I start with 10 foot sticks of 11 gauge electric welded tubing, one and three quarter inches in diameter. Most metal supply companies will have this material in 20 foot sections. I have them cut it in half to make it easier for transport. I use a flap wheel on a grinder to smooth out the rough cut edges. The next thing I'll do is write down every bend and every cut that I frequently reference when making these tubes. Designing the location of all six bends and two cuts was the most time consuming part of this entire project. The next thing I do is I write down the degrees at each bend location on which I stop using my tube bender. These degrees do not represent the actual bend of the metal. Rather, they take all the guesswork out of it from the spring back of the material. What I'm drawing here are reference arrows. This will help determine if I'm making a driver side hoop or a passenger side hoop. This will make more sense later. Feel free to take a screenshot of this if you want to copy this design. Before marking the tubes, I clean them with WD-40. Next thing I do is copy the design onto the tube. I mark every bend line with a solid line and I mark every cut line with a dotted line. To make it easier to see, I follow up with a metal marking pencil. Since the tube will be rotating in the tube bender, these marks have to go all the way around the tube. A simple way to do this is to roll up a piece of paper on the tube and then trace it. Now that the tube is fully marked and ready to be bent, let's talk about the tube bender. I'm using the Woodward Fab manual tube bender with a one and three quarter inch die. This is sitting on a Woodward stand on top of a piece of plywood with rollers on it. To convert this manual bender into a pneumatic bender, I'm using the Swag Off-Road Conversion Kit, along with an Arbor Freight pneumatic ram. My tube bender is leveled out and to make sure the other end of the tube is level, I'm using an arm from a car hoist. This can also be achieved by using a roller stand. We are now ready to start our first bend. I'm placing the tube in the die, making sure everything is secure. This process could vary depending on what tube bender you have. Here I'm lining up my first bend mark on the tube with the mark on the die. And now I'm securing the tube so it doesn't move off the mark. I'm hooking up the pneumatic ram to my air compressor and I'm making sure the angle marker is set at zero degrees. Next, I squeeze the trigger and allow the pneumatic ram to bend the tube. While the tube is bending, I make sure it stays clean with WD-40, but not too much where it erases my marks. The first bend is set at 80 degrees which means I have to readjust the die about halfway through. I relieve the pressure off the ramp and then pull the pin out of the die. Once the pin falls into the new hole, I tighten the seal on the ramp and continue bending the tube the rest of the way. I keep a close eye on the angle marker, and as soon as it hits 80 degrees, I stop. The first bend is done. Now we have the challenge of getting the stretched metal out of the tube bender. It starts by relieving the pressure of the ram, removing all the pins, and a little bit of persuasion with a hammer. Then we slide the tube to the next marked bend and repeat the process. Here I'm making sure the second marked bend lines up with the die 
and just as important, I'm making sure that the end is now level. I locked it in place and we're now ready to start our second bend. The second bend doesn't take long as it's only 9 degrees. It's also much easier to remove the tube from these small degree bends. Next, we slide the tube to the mark for the third bend. Now remember the third bend has a reference arrow. Since we are making a driver sided hoop, this arrow indicates that we need to rotate the material in the bender 90 degrees downward. And then using a level, we make sure that it's perfectly plumb. It should now look something like this before starting the third bend. If we were making a passenger sided hoop, this would be rotated 90 degrees upward rather than downward. This third bend takes the most time as it's a large degree bend. It's also the most difficult to get out of the die when it's done. Once it's loose, we now slide the tube to the fourth mark to begin our next bend. This bend requires that the tube sections closest to the bender remain level to the ground. Here I'm cleaning the tube and getting ready for the fourth bend. I stop this bend when my dial says 70 degrees. We now slide the tube to the fifth mark for bending. This bend also has a reference arrow that requires us to rotate the tube in the bender. Since this is a driver's side hoop, we are rotating the tube upward 90 degrees and then checking for plumb. We are now ready for the fifth bend. Once again, this is a small degree bend, making it easy and quick. Now slide the tube in position for the sixth and final bend. This last bend is positioned different than the other bends. We want the first bend and the last bend to be parallel to each other. To do that, we put a level on the very end of this tube and lock it in place. After double checking the marks and cleaning the tube, we are now ready for the last bend. I stop this last bend when the dial hits 80 degrees, and then I work on getting the tube out of the bender. Now the only thing left is to cut on the two marked lines. Hopefully your dotted lines are still visible and they didn't wash off. This scrap piece of tubing is the perfect length for a support brace in the spare tire carrier. Next thing I do is grind off the rough edges from the cut before test fitting it on the van. This tube is designed to get the weight of the spare tire off of the door hinges and put it directly on the body of the van. This is done by using brackets that customers make themselves and bolt directly to the van. Now what we just built was a driver's side hoop. Here's a time lapse of building a driver's side hoop and you can tell because the first rotation of the tube is bent downward and the second rotation of the tube is bent upward. Now to build a mirror image of that, everything stays the same except for the rotation of the tube at these two different marks. Now here's a time lapse of building a passenger side hoop. And you can tell because the tube's first rotation is upward and the second rotation is downward. Everything else stays the same. Here I am cleaning and wrapping one to ship out to a customer. But if you found this video helpful or used my design and would like to show your gratitude, there are two different ways you can do so. You can send a payment to my PayPal address, or you can do a $20 one-time donation to the Wounded Warriors Project.